<laughs> Let's call the meeting to order. Uh, first item on our agenda tonight is the consideration of the minutes of the July 21st, 2021 meeting. I have no comments. And see as there's nobody else, I move that we approve as listed. Have a motion? I'll second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, next item is the system operators update. Kenny? Went out. It's working now, um, so I didn't uh, get to uh, record that. Um, we uh, we was able to pump cell one um, all the way down to the sludge, so I've got it off and off ramp, and um, so um, that's uh, yeah. There is uh, fifteen uh, fifteen million is uh, what was able to get uh, rid of. So cell two is actually. Um, uh, looking pretty good too, as far as you know the level right now. So I'm um, going into the fall. So it's uh, <clears throat> right now we're doing pretty good as far as that goes. Yeah, there's a picture of cell two. That's the water level in it today. And then there's cell one, and you can see the sludge around the bottom part and uh, it's a it's about probably two feet those um, aerators are uh, about six feet so it's under the middle of those when's the last time you've seen it that low uh, actually I saw a picture of uh, 20 um, let's see well it was a picture in 2018 that I'd found from way back um, so I don't know what I don't know what year that was, um, but that's the, that's the second time it's been that low. I guess it was when first response was here, um, and they did that little uh, and uh, found the problem with the influent line coming into that cell. Where it, uh, it ripped the boot. So are we going to start making plans to clean that cell out, or are we going to wait until we're further down the line, or am I getting ahead of myself? Well, Matthew, we had been exchanging <laughs> communications about that very topic, and you had a visit out there, correct, yeah. Matthew? Yeah, so Kenny and I met out there. Kenny and Brandon and I met uh, a couple days ago, and we're looking at some different options of what we can and cannot do. Um, it, Obviously, there's a lot of material there, um, so it, it will be expensive to deal with now. So um, dealing with that now versus later when we've got it as part of the SRF loan, that's part of the equation. Something else that Kenny and I were talking about is looking into, could we do something uh, to basically bury it and leave it there? I, I don't. I don't know that that's an option, but it's something that we at least need to talk about. So I've, I've got it on me. It's on my to-do list to have some discussions with some geotech folks in our office and see if that's even something we could consider. Because if we could leave it there, then that'll cut down a lot of costs yeah. um, in the long run. But I don't know. With that kind of material, leaving it there and burying it, I'm not sure that that is going to be an option. But it's something we need to explore. Do we have any concerns about that cell starting to fill back up at all between now and whenever yeah. we start? It's, it's going to get whatever rain is, you know, but as far as I was seeing groundwater getting in there, um, but the rain, whatever rain we get, it's going to, it's going to accumulate it. What about if we have another freeze? We get like ice. I mean, it's relatively low like that. Yeah. I don't see it hurting anything. Um, anything else for Kenny? 
that's that's how we got. Thank you. Um, uh, next will be the bars design updates from Matthew Johnson. <coughs> You get and uh, bridge molders. Yeah, there you go. Number one. Yep. There you go. So, uh, first item to give an update on is the CCTV work we had, that had been done in Bridgemore. So, since the last meeting, we've had a chance to review all the data that had been collected. Um, majority of the pipes in the subdivision do look do look good, or in, and they're in good shape. However, we do have a few issues that we did uh, come across. Um, one, the uh, I know the picture is a little bit grainy there, but the picture on the left that is accumulated grease that's in in one of the lines that we found. There are a few other lines that had uh, similar issues, so um, that's obviously something that we'll want to deal with. That. Uh, can impact the capacity of the pipe, or pipes in this case, um, and it, it, that's just how it happens in the system. It accumulates over time, and so there needs to be regular cleaning of certain pipes. So, um, and that, we'll get to that on the next slide here in a second. The picture on the right is um, there's a few, most of, this, of the pipes in Bridgemore are PVC pipe. However, there are a handful of pipes that are ductile iron and that's the picture on the right. And the ones that are ductile iron, the uh, vast majority of them are leaking at the, there's evidence of leaking at the joints. Again, it's kind of hard to see just because of the color and the graininess here, but uh, you wouldn't normally see the kind of pronounced red. It, it, it looks red when you can see it um, on, the, on the screen, computer screen, but you wouldn't see that sort of, um, uh, if it was, if there was not water coming in at those joints, you would not see that sort of evidence. So we saw it consistently um, in those pipes. And so we are um, recommending to do some rehabilitation on those pipes in order to keep the water from getting into the system. So Steve, you wanna scroll down? Thank you. Um, so after reviewing all the data and, and kind of in summary, um, the pipes that are leaking, there's about 2,000 linear feet uh, worth of those pipes that are ductile and are leaking. Uh, we're recommending installing cured in place pipe. I don't know if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, essentially it's, it's kind of like a, think of it as a sock that they put into the pipe. They fill it up with either water or they can cure it with steam or UV light. Well, we typically, in my experience, I've typically leaned more towards carrying it with uh, water. It fully inflates the bag and it will adhere to the pipe, the hose pipe, um, very well. So it's pretty much become the uh, common rehab practice throughout the industry at this point. Yeah, think of it that way. Yeah. And when, once, it, once it cures and it adheres to that hose pipe, it hardens, it, the, the steam or the hot water will heat it up. And once it's, it's heated, it will harden and essentially becomes a really thin pipe inside of the hose pipe is what you end up with. So again, 2,000 feet of that. Um, there are a few pipes that, are, that were worse than others as far as the cleaning goes, but when the TV work was done, they didn't do any cleaning. We were trying to cut down on costs where we could, but because of what we found, we recommend go ahead and just do a thorough cleaning of that subdivision. So the full subdivision is around 35,000 linear feet. Um, performing all that work, uh, roughly the construction, design cost, bidding, et cetera, is roughly 300,000 to 350,000 to do that work. And then lastly, uh, one other recommendation that came out of the, uh, once we saw what we, we were just looking at on the previous screen, with the grease that it had accumulated over time, is there's a couple of pipes that we would recommend get cleaned on a regular basis. And that's not atypical for a collection system. That most collection systems have 
certain pipes that tend to accumulate more debris or grease than others, and they end up having to be cleaned on somewhat of a regular frequency. It can vary six months, a year, but um, in order to keep the capacity in the system and uh, keep that material uh, from accumulating to where it might cause an SSO, um, it needs to be cleaned on a regular, fairly regular basis. So um, that's it on Bridgemore. I, I, any questions on, on that? Sure. Yes, sir. I've got one for you. I'm looking at the chart, the next slide, if you would, Steve. Where oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I need I did, to be cleaned. Yeah, I did have another. If you want to scroll down, Steve, I'm sorry. I did forget. Uh -huh. I had a, a map here. So what the, yeah, the, the uh, sorry, I'll get to your question in a second. The, the pink, that's where the uh, cured in place pipe is being recommended. That's where the <laughs> ductile iron pipe is. And the orange is, those are the, the worst areas that we saw. Now, we're recommending going and cleaning the whole basin, but the, the worst areas were the ones that were uh, in orange on that map. So, I'm sorry. One of the cleaning pipes is coming out of the school. Are they dumping grease into the sewer? I, I'm sure there is some grease coming from the sure school that's is. getting into the system, no right. doubt. Yes. Maybe there should so be a communication to them about the problem. Yeah, yeah I, I think in general, I'm. Uh, um, yeah, I know, yeah, talking to them about grease, um, even putting something on the sewer bill to everybody, and uh, and frankly, in the system. We can even put a piece together that we can put on social media, that we can put on the town website, and we can share yeah. amongst the neighbor, like things not to do. Yeah. Yep. We know they're not to pay attention, but we need to work. Yeah, <laughs> not putting wipes down in there and stuff. Right. Maybe we put a sign. I don't. Know. Right. Yeah, I've a lot of uh, other utilities, especially the bigger utilities, have really gone after this and have developed mascots and all kinds of things to uh, make draw attention to grease and the grease ball. wipes yeah. getting into the system. Maybe we could just show them a pitch, that picture of that pipe. Would well, yeah, that will that might get people's attention. It might also push them away, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's definitely something that everybody deals with, and, and attention needs to be drawn to it. How, how much of our collection system in town is, is iron pipe? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. It's, it's not a lot. It's probably, I don't know, 10% maybe? Not even that. Probably. Not even that? Yeah, the only the only parts that's going to be ductile iron is where it's real deep. I don't like ductile iron at all, uh, but it's going to be where it's real deep or it's in a field area where the um, soil, I mean, the original ground was under and it was built up, and there might be some in that, but it's just a uh, uh, little bit in Canterbury, a little bit right there. Um, and uh, those spots in that subdivision right there are, are deep. They're 18 feet, 19 feet deep. Okay. <coughs> I think where it crosses the highway, it's ductile too. Yeah. Right? Well, cr right, yeah, crossing. Mm -hmm. so, so, Matthew, in summary, they didn't really find any you know, smoking gun, huge void area where we're getting the I and I. No, but we found enough. Numerous we found an, we found various spots where it's definitely leaking in. So, uh, granted, when I think we've had this discussion before, when you do the math and average it out over the course of a month, it's basically a it's a garden hose. Mm -hmm. So, this what we found. It may not be all of it, but it's definitely going to knock out a portion of it for sure. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the cured in place pipe, we're also recommending uh, those pipes have lateral connections, a few of them do. And in lieu of digging up, in some cases uh, we would dig up the lateral and go ahead and replace the lateral while we're doing the rehab. These are relatively new, they're less 10 years old or less. So we're just recommending to install a top hat. And what basically what that is is what it, it's shaped just like a top hat and it goes up into the lateral two or three, two or three or four or five feet. And then the, the bottom of the hat, if you can imagine, basically it seals that connection between the service lateral and the, the mainline pipe. So that all, even, between the cured in place of the mainline and then sealing those connections, 
with the surface laterals, that should give us a tight system in that in, in that area. I would just like to ask one more question about the grease, and that is, mm -hmm. do we have any provisions with the school that they're required to they, maintain they, their grease trap? They or? they should have pretty good sized grease traps over there. Um, I know that's that is a requirement on. Um, any kind of commercial or uh, development like that. So um, it's been a while back, but I'm sure um, I'd uh, discuss that with Richard, you know, when they was putting that in. You know. yeah. Everybody needs a friendly reminder, though, occasionally. Yeah. So. And, yeah, they, they need to be on the program, too, to mm -hmm. get that grease out of there. Right. Our right. Pumping program. Mm -hmm. Did we check to see if they're following the program? Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Um, yeah, because and that's one thing the Bridgemore lift station, um, compared to the other lift stations, has always been free of grease. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that's, well, that, that's one maybe it's, result. I don't know. But, um, and two, I, I want to look at the video and see kind of where it was at. We've had to cut the um, um, Bridge, Bridgemore lift station off. We had to just do it the other day for the tie-in. And sometimes it'll back up in that, it might back up in that line a little bit, and then it's going to go to the top and it's going to hit the top of the pipe, which, you know, it accumulates there anyway. But um, uh, that might be if some of those are closer to the lift station down there. To, the, yeah, know. the worst one that, I, that we were just looking at, that's mm -hmm. near the lift station. Yeah. So. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, Matthew, you mentioned yes, um, maybe a regular cleaning of the system. Is it? How often would that be? Uh, it, again, it kind of varies. Uh, it, you kind of, it's kind of something you have to kind of monitor. So I would suggest something a little shorter probably at first, uh, say six months. And then if you, you know, they, they show up and there's not much material there, you might be able to stretch it out to a year. Or even longer, but it's kind of just kind of as needed. As yeah, you right, right. Um, typically, most collection systems, um, it, especially if the state requires a CMOM program, ten percent of the system is cleaned on an annual basis. So, by, over the course of ten years, the entire system ends up being cleaned. So that that's kind of a, a industry standard that folks use. Okay. All right, Steve, you want to go down to the next one? Um, not much new to update on in regards to the uh, force main and pump station project along Highway 31. Uh, we did receive uh, developer plans for the pipe that both Kenny and I have reviewed and provided back comments, and those have been, I think those are either finalized or near being finalized at this point. Uh, the plans for the pump station at the church, those are also in the works. We, we've, seen, uh, we've seen copies of those, but they're not, they have not been submitted for our, our official review yet. So um, they should be close, but uh, we're not quite there yet. But that's that really not much has happened since the last month when we uh, met. And we need those plans finalized before we can do the land acquisition. Right, yeah, we need a, a solid site plan before we can present that to the church uh, and let them mull it over and give us any feedback. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Okay, see if you want to. Thank you, sir. Um, as far as update on capacity of reservation, uh, this is a little bit, this should be past tense, but. Uh, last night, the Moon property was approved by BOMA. Uh, the capacity request was. Um, and so with that, uh, of the million gallons that we had capacity-wise, there's less than 5,000 gallons a day left. Uh, everything else has been either reserved or is already in the ground. So um, I think we'll get to, a, in a slide or two here, um, discussions on where we go from here. You say this is the perfect segue into your next. Yeah, topic. all right. <laughs> <laughs> so it was requested last night that we get a copy of the 
where all the reservations are. So, uh, yeah, I meant to. Work. Yeah, I meant to mention that uh, Alderman Alexander asked for a, a summary of where we were at on everything, and I'll I'll put something. There. I'll obviously get it to all you guys in as well as Boma. Okay. Um, Steve, so you can move on. Thank you. Um, update on where we are with the plant project. So we've. Uh, We've answered all the mail in regards to SRF, and they're ready to issue a FONSI. FONSI stands for a um, finding of no significant impact. Basically, that means that we're clear from an environmental standpoint. Um, we've satisfied all those uh, all those issues. What they're waiting on now is the SOP permit process to be finalized. And I was actually talking to Brad Harris just a couple of days ago, and he said that they would be getting us the draft permit. Uh, I, we were supposed to get it on Monday, but uh, we haven't received it yet. So it should be any time now. The uh, financial review that SRF conducts has been ongoing. We've been trying to get an update on that from them and have run into a little bit of a wall um, in getting a somebody to answer our phone calls. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, we're still trying to get an answer. We've found a way to go around it, I think, and get, uh, but I, unfortunately I don't have an answer for you tonight on what the status is, but we know it's in process. We also know that I think we were talking about, or Bowman was talking about that last night. They're short staffed, just like everybody else is. So it's taken a bit longer than what we were originally told it would. Are we still interest rate wise? where it was before? As far as I know, as far as I know. Lock in on a mortgage, whatever, I don't know. Yeah, we're not to the point yet where um, where we can lock that in, unfortunately. But well, we I, haven't seen the green initiative percentage change. Mm -hmm. That's their mm -hmm. sort of um, showcase grant premier package that they tout. And that's what they're trying to do is encourage mm -hmm. green initiatives by having that low percentage. So mm -hmm. I'm certain they're not going to want to jeopardize that particular program. Yeah, I don't think that's going to change. And this project uh, qualifies in that respect. Um, but so once the financial review does complete, uh, the a public meeting will need to be scheduled. Um, I'm like, it's likely we could. T uh, Tag that along to one of these meetings if it if the timing works out in that way, um, and then that part that financial review portion will be complete. So you can think of it in two parallel. I think I've said this before in two parallel trains: the financial portion and then the environmental slash engineering portion. It, I know I've been saying this for a while uh, that we're, it's been a long journey, but I think we're getting fairly close to the end of this um, with the financial review nearing completion and the uh, once the SOP permit being finalized, the FONSI being issued. Kirk, what's the, is it a 10-day notice requirement on a meeting like that, or is it more, longer than that? At least 10 days with your issues. And I think they have their own stipulations, too, that they want to see in terms of how long the the review period is open, I think, I, 30 days. I'm not 100% sure. They yeah, don't the, hold it to me, but they have their own specific requirements. Yeah, there is a review period of 30 days. The The meeting itself, though, there I was surprised. Yeah. They're actually very, there's, there's not a lot of guidance about uh, what needs to happen at the meeting other than the rates, what is going on with the rates needs to be discussed, but a lot of that's already been taken care of, been discussed in various other meetings. Um, and, but, and then the cost of the project itself, obviously. Um, but that, that's really the only uh, guidance they have as far as you're talking, so you're, what you're needs talking to be discussed about is whether meeting. the meeting needs to happen at the end of that review period or whether we can hold the meeting and then the review period can continue to run. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's my understanding we can schedule that meeting as soon as they're done with the financial review and talking to the SRF folks. Mr. Chair, 30, uh, 10 days notice posted, uh, read it, uh, right. uh, definitely on our website. Yeah. And, and we did ask, could we schedule that if we know the review, the, that review is 
imminent as far as uh, being completed? And the answer was no, that we have to wait until they're, until they're done. Yeah, I just asked because I figured we'd want to have that meeting as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mr. Chair, if it makes sense while we're talking about sort of these related things under remaining capacity and expansion of the MBR facility, could we move six up since we're already on the MBR project update and talk a little bit about that, the scope of the MBR beyond the one million gallons. Based on that slide we just saw, it seems like this is a good segue and point. Well, I actually thought that was our next slide. I, yeah, I thought I, you did. Yeah, you I, said. I just assumed do that and, and, yeah. and maybe bump seven up as well since that gets into some yes. funding mechanism. Yes. Well, that's exactly, yeah. and, and thank you. I um, was at the GNRC, the Greater Nashville Regional Commission today, and what that is is, in essence, the uh, the leadership from Middle Tennessee, the mayors, and just all of that wherewithal. And um, everybody is frankly concerned about the timeline for spending that money because they're worried everybody is going to go out and <laughs> launch off with all the projects and contractors and supplies are going to be hoarded and or taken. Ours, I think, and maybe wrongly, I guess time is going to tell, doesn't seem to worry me quite that much because we have a rather, this MBR project's rather unique. And with the cartridges, I know it's not just plug and play, but it's not, if you're doing a million, to go to this, the couple of million extra, you're already pretty much in that design and build queue. So I'm not as worried about that as I might be if I were building a, if we were building a traditional wastewater plant, you know, a full-scale Franklin-type plant. Well, I, th I think, if I'm not mistaken, I thought when I read the plan, they've got to 2040 to complete projects. So they've, they've got some time. They do. Yeah. But everybody is sort of, as a reason, region, trying to push if they can, which, again, benefits us, because if they're not ready, yeah. there may be more money for us. The governor and others, according to the um, comptroller who was at the TML conference we had in Chattanooga, uh, was talking about, and the people specifically in these programs were presenting the possibility of counties getting more money to distribute. And of course, when we have six jurisdictions, that was my question and all, equity-wise. But they're trying to build in, if those things do amount to sizable additional amounts, safeguards and ways in which the county will have to answer for its uh, doling out of those additional funds. So all of that is to say our approximate 1.9 million, you get the first year, Steve's got the notification now of the 900,000 approximately the additional amount comes another year thereafter. Where this additional funding might come in and when and how, that's kind of up in the air because they keep changing the final rules as to when the final, final, final rules will be developed for some of those things. And that's just the way it is with federal grants. You know, it's, it's um, ever evolving or devolving. So, Honestly, I think, you know, it makes an abundant amount of sense when we're already bumping up on the million as, I mean, it's almost a foregone conclusion. Why would we want to find ourselves back in these circumstances battling again when we can use this money? And in fact, that's what the state of Tennessee is recommending, to use it for such projects. They call them multi-generational beneficiaries that, you know, this will impact the children of the children have this sort of um, value added um, benefit as opposed to some places, uh, you know, heard a lot of wacky examples today. But this, this was pretty much what Jason, the comptroller, and a lot of the people that were presenters at the conference kept saying, we really, really would like to strongly encourage just this type of uh, of use of the funds. Well, the fun I mean, the funds can only be used for water, wastewater, or broadband. And the ones, the ones that we're talking about. Right. So, so we, we qualify for that, we, obviously. Absolutely, yeah. and it makes no sense to... I mean, broadband, they have 500000 in grants. Yeah. 
So I wasn't going to get into that and what other people are doing or not doing. But this makes, in their case, an yep. abundant amount of sense to go to the one and a half million gallon design. And, and that brings me to the next question, since especially we already raised the rates and so forth to help underwrite this green initiative with the state revolving loan fund. And we went through all those MTAS evaluations. In terms of timing, is this going to gum up the works if we go back to TDAC? and say, okay, our million gallons, we really, with our due diligence, need to go to one and a half. How is that going to impact, or will it, the timeline and all of those things we talk about every month that are, are kind of a concern? Well, a, a lot of what takes time is, to, is for the state to evaluate environmental impacts. And in this case, the footprint, we're not going to go right. outside the footprint of what the uh, one million gallon a day plant was. So that shouldn't change. Um, as far as the SOP permit, the SOP permit is limited by the amount of drip that we have available. Right. That's not gonna change. Right. So in, in, in that sense, that shouldn't be affected either. Um, the, there will be changes obviously to the plans. Those will have to be submitted to TDEC and be reviewed. Um, they've already seen everything else, so it would be kind of limited to just those. They've been, right, they've been turning around those faster than I've ever seen in the, in the last 15 years. In a, I don't know, Bruce, what you've seen, but in the last year or so, it has been clicking. So that shouldn't take much time either. Um, the, uh, the financial portion, that might come up for a little bit. We're going to add a little bit of time by doing this, but I don't think it will be the full six to seven, eight months that we've seen up to this point. Right. And you kind of read my mind going into that. Are we almost better off getting the million dollar portion, the review period and all that behind us and then launch in because mm -hmm. all of those underpinnings that were done were for the million, not for the one and a half, the one and a half pending. I think that would be an easy thing then to come back mm -hmm. after we've gotten beyond the first hurdle. That, that's what my question was going to be. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd hate yeah. to gum up anything. To, yeah, to yeah. Do. we've already got kind of the bird in the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 get that let's done. Let's get that done, and then if we're going to expand, we can cross that bridge. Yes, and we'll have time during the construction process to address that. Cause that's going to be. Mm -hmm. 16, 18 month process. That's, that's anyway, right. So, and yeah. we're going to know more about this potential other money, which is why I mentioned it. We don't know now. Yeah. And it's not going to be tomorrow or the next day that we will know. But more and more as this comes well, and, to the and forefront. Two, it, it may also, you know, in the intervening time, and it may only be three or four months, but it may give us an opportunity to, to kind of gauge what additional development may be looking to come to the town, too, to see if it's even necessary to expand to 500,000 or Maybe it's only 250, or maybe it's some other figure in between. Um, if there are projects that are that are coming, that they go, well, we got to have capacity. It's like, well, we don't have any, but how much do you need? Because we can we, we can put you on a waiting list and mm -hmm. start the process, and you know, it kind of helps us manage what do we really need, where, where do we need to be in the next 10, 15 years, capacity wise, and is is 1.5 enough? Is is it too much? Is it not enough? Mm -hmm. And you know, I think with the commercial development that we need as a town to underwrite services and do things that a healthy town does, we're, we're going to need it. Yeah, I think it'll be there. I think um, it'll be there. You know, because obviously uh, residential development doesn't doesn't pay the bills. It, it drives the need for services. So while that's all well and good, I think the uh, the part of the equation that's been missing here is is getting that, uh, and, and that's not an indictment, it's just a reality. We haven't had capacity to, to court it. Um, and, and I think more, we've now gotten a state national re uh, retail association mechanism that uh, will help us in all small jurisdictions uh, do more with economic development. So I think more and more of these tools will drive, frankly, those kinds of parties to our corridor. I mean, we're sitting right here with 840, yes. 31, and soon to be, I guess, if they can uh, do 
meet the federal build-out guidelines, the 431 intersection being rebuilt. So, you know, there, people are going to want to be in this area. And then the problem is going to be just choosing what kind of development you want and you don't want. You know, how many cracker barrel <coughs> signs do you want to see on 840? Well, that's where the LDO changes come in. That we're that's right. Do. That's whether we differentiate what we've already put in there, do we need to make the small adjustments? We know we've got to make some tweaks to be able to attract certain businesses, but it needs to be, we need to be able to make those choices. Unlike other folks who just went ahead and like, we need this now, mm -hmm. it, it allows us to be a little more selective yeah. in the process of what we're doing. What the Alderman's talking about, we um, approved and launched all aboard. That's the name of our our project that will combine an update of an, and a revamp and an overhaul in some respects of the LDO, the Land Development Ordinance, the General Plan, often also called a comp plan in a lot of places, a comprehensive plan, and a major thoroughfare plan. And all of those things, the reason they were all coupled um, together, I know that's a lot of train metaphors, but it seemed to fit, is so that we can... Um, you know, not have them become disjointed. If you're looking at all of that at the same time, where you want your road infrastructure, just like we're talking about with their wastewater infrastructure, it kind of drives some of the underlying zoning discussions, what you want, where, and how you want it. So that has now begun in earnest. The kickoff meeting was week four, and uh, that's not gonna be a quick and easy process. But it's good timing with this, and also the county's um, growth uh, plan initiative or reinitiative, they're up, having to update their 20 year plan. So, all the jurisdictions in Williamson, Spring Hill, and Franklin, in particular, being our neighbors, are also looking at their growth boundaries. So, as it relates to whether we grow westerly or what have you, and how that interrelates is also being discussed, this bigger discussion, from an infrastructure standpoint. Who can best serve what areas? And, you know, who, who does or doesn't want to serve what areas? For instance, we had the uh, people out, I guess some of them from Bethesda last night, that aren't particularly interested in growth that direction. Of course, the irony is they may not understand we have a a larger acreage requirement in those areas in the county. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's a lot of sorting out to be done over the next perhaps 12 to 18 months. And this, I guess the final point is, this discussion I think obviously fits well into that. And as you say, the, the major point is we have time. And there'll be things along the way that will help with this, I hope, as to whether the sizing is, as you said, A or B, in addition to the one million. But I, th I think that's, you know, as I've talked to people, I think that's going to be a concern is, you know, if we make available a lot of capacity on the front end, then that's going to attract maybe more development or maybe more types of development we may not necessarily want to have um, and we may be stuck, may get stuck with some of that um, just based on the way zoning works and you know, if someone can, can build in that zone, they can build in that zone. And, um, whereas if we have, you know, smaller chunks, we might be able to control that growth a little bit and it may, it may give some people that are worried about out of control development um, because we have capacity, um, maybe a little more peace of mind that, you know, it, it's going to be baby stepped and, and not just we're going to open the floodgates and let everyone come in with their department stores and restaurants and gas stations and everything else. Because I know that's not the intent at all. No, and that's, that's what this exercise will help with. The square footage, how big lots should be, the setbacks, you know, all of those kinds of things as to how many particular types of zones you might want versus others. Going back maybe from transect zoning to Euclidean zoning because a lot of folks aren't really quite sure what all that means. 
um, even the experts that help put that together. Um, so I think this will be an opportunity to have a better understanding, as you're saying, what Thompson Station wants versus what it doesn't, and have higher, not minimal standards. Some of what we have now, we have to keep telling and reminding people what's on the books, minimum standards or not, <laughs> that's what they are. They don't have to do more than the minimum. Yeah. You can ask them to do the maximum or others, but they don't have to. Yeah. So all of these things can help slow that train down. Last metaphor, I swear. But uh, no, anyway. it's not. <laughs> I knew you were... <laughs> yeah, you'll get some more. Right? There's a caboose in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah there it is. is. So <laughs> that, that pretty well took care of, I guess, six, unless there was more you wanted to talk about. I think Skip. Uh, oh, okay. Skips, I'm sorry. Actually, I got a question for you, Ken. Have we received the results of the census and figuring out what our growth was since the last census? We are 7,400 and what was the? 70? 81. 81. And we were talking last night about redistricting as a result of that, that growth. And I believe, anecdotally, I have heard and seen that we are the fastest growing town percentage wise. In the state? In the state. Like kind of gives us an idea of what we should be number doing two. Number two. Future Maybe number two. But <laughs> we're pretty yeah. we're up there. Yeah. So to the whole point of what Jeff just said and <laughs> what we're talking about, you know, how much is when is too much too much? And that's the discussion I tried to have in Nolan's, but when I saw it signed on there in October of fourteen started January 1. They were about our size. They're now 14,000. And people may tell you some that live there that the roads and congestion, as fun as it is here, it could be worse. So you've got to be, yes, we have an opportunity to, to think long and hard about that. And um, I guess the last thing I'll say on that, and that this is to your point, they had sewerage from Nashville. So capacity wasn't an issue. It just kept fueling annexation. Yeah. You know, if people wanted it, they would submit their, um, their service provision plans. You had a utility for water, just like we do with the utility district. <clears throat> but they had the, the sewerage from Nashville. So it made it a little more difficult, even though I think they could have done more to govern that with the road infrastructure. But if you, to your point, if you don't have an infinite amount, I'm not saying Nashville has an infinite amount, but for the purposes of this discussion, it's certainly fueled going from a 7,000 plus population to a, a now approximately 14,000 plus population. And you can imagine how different Thompson Station would look by doubling itself. Well, it's also one of the benefits of having the drip field if you're if you're wanting to restrict a lot of that yes. too, right? <laughs> that is the upside. You're, you're limited by the amount of land you can you can acquire and, and install drip in. So. And that's the other part of that one point of the one point right. five is having to acquire another seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. gallons worth of disposal capacity. Right. So that comes to the next discussion. Yes, I'll take it to the well, well, we got to find Alexander first. Well, yes yeah. and or no. The discussions with Franklin have still been fruitful. And it's going to take them a while to get there through discussions we've had politically, financially, and what have you. But some of these other... Well, let me pay devil's advocate for a second. We just talked about sewer being the limiting factor, right? But if we get a connection with Franklin... That's right. Now we've got unlimited... Not unlimited, but That's, we have vastly it, more um, capacity available. Yeah. It, cuts both, we, it cuts both ways. Yeah. That's just the dampener up a little bit. So, Does anybody ultimately, though, relatively speaking, ever want to be in such a heavy regulated industry that, you know, is ever evolving and devolving with EPA and others? If you can get out of the land game, you know, there, there may be some benefit to it. I'm sure Franklin, if we ever work out something like this, is going to have some limitations on how much of their capacity they want to give up. But at least it then puts the town in the position of not having to be in the land business, where we're going out and speculating buying land and on a couple of the projects, what, 40% return or less on some of it, um, just given nature of soils and all. 
And the reason I even keep, I guess, circling a little on it is because some of the funding discussions that were had in the last 30 days revolved around perhaps regional plans and regional projects. So I think you're going to see more and more of that that will drive the possibilities with places like ours in Franklin, potentially, to do more um, regionally. Uh, I, I, uh, I know TDAC likes that idea. Mm -hmm. And I, it, uh, as some of these funds maybe are reallocated and, and or not spent, there may be those opportunities. Well, it's, it's frankly encouraged in that plan. Yes, the that's right. Plan is actually encouraged that's right. Regionalization of utilities. Yep. And, you know, you're, you're young enough in some folks that I think, you know, y'all will see a lot more of that. Maybe continue to try to keep your eye on that horizon. 10 or 15 years is not a long time. Not, not in these planning horizons we're talking about. So, yeah, that, I guess, then goes to Jeff, what you had on the agenda. I don't know if there was any more about... Um, I, I just wanted to include that so that the, the board was aware of the... the Funding yep. avenue cool. and what the state is trying to do, and I think uh, I think they've earmarked about thirty million dollars for Willi for Williamson County right. as part of that. So yep. uh, you know, so nice chunk of change if we can get a little piece of that. It would be great. Was there anything more we need to talk about regarding um, either the expansion or I know we wanted to talk about the Alexander Drift Fields too, because I think. Where we're at, based on capacity reservations, we probably need to look at starting that project maybe a little sooner than we had anticipated. Yeah, well, um, with yeah, with the reservations where we're at, um, Kenny and I were talking, like I said, a couple of days ago. We're seeing, correct me if I'm wrong, around four hundred thousand, four and a quarter, uh, coming in uh, regularly. So we've got. 48, 49 acres-ish right now. So it won't take that long to get to uh, where we've uh, used all that up. So yeah, that Alexander definitely needs to be um, on the table soon. Because um, like, we, like we've talked about, once the MBR is in, is, on, is in place, we'll have the treatment capacity, but we, the drip will still be lagging behind. So in order for these folks that have been uh, are, are in the queue right now and have reserved a spot, for them to be able to start building and tie in, we'll need that extra disposal capacity at that point. You said we had 49 acres now? It, it's 48, 49. Mm -hmm. how, how big was the Alexander property? Uh, it was going to be an additional... 30 to 33, somewhere around there. No, I, I see you said it was 36 acres, I think, to be usable. Okay, well, whatever I said before. But how, how big is the property? I mean, oh, acres. the total property? It's 100, it's, acres. it's 100 acres. 100 what? It's over 100 acres. Yeah, yeah I think Three, it's... I think. 103. Yeah. Okay. So we got a third. Yeah, we got a third of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the whole point of the discussion that I was having about spoils and... You know, it's, it's a difficult business to be in. It really is. Now, now one thing to keep in mind, though, is uh, if and when the, well, I shouldn't say if, when TDEC finalizes uh, their reuse regs that they've been working on for some time, there's a possibility we might be able to use some of that land that's not usable right now uh, in a different capacity at that point. But that's not been finalized yet, so we'd just be speculating at this point. But the other hill property, do we use some of that? Uh, potentially, that? if if uh, the, the regs change, then yes, potentially we could use so here's the, more of that area. So if the regs change and we put the drip in, how we're doing it now, <clears throat> you just go in and connect to the rest of the drip. I, yeah, I'm not exact. I'm not sure exactly how that we would approach that, but probably yes, we would just try to kind of fill in the areas that we weren't already in building onto a building. Right. Yeah, and other ways that we could uh, get rid of water, um, which will probably be allowed once <coughs> as regs are final, is sending water to some of the subdivisions to use in the common areas or 
um, fill uh, ponds, uh, like in Tollgate. Um, so there'll be it, it won't just be those properties. Well, there will be other avenues to get rid of water that we don't currently have available to us, or at least we can't get permitted currently. They, they make a big issue of being able to get rid of the water 12 months of the year, all year round, and not have any restrictions. Mm. What restrictions do you see would impede us from getting rid of the water? I mean, other than, I guess, a big ice storm or something like that, well, or what? Well, uh, so, some of that is related to um, some previous experiences the state has had with um, re reuse water. Um, the, and it, it was really more, at least the circumstances that I'm familiar with, it was really geared more towards the type of use that that, that, re, that reuse water was being used for. In that particular case that I'm familiar with, it was a golf course and it was only being watered, uh, you know, during certain parts of the year. And so during uh, the winter parts of the year where it didn't need as much water, then they couldn't put out as much water because they didn't want it. Um, so then you're kind of stuck. You got water coming in, but you can't get rid of as much as you'd like. So that was part of it. And then the other, the other factor in that was it was going to a private uh, uh, piece of property that that particular, I don't remember if it was a utility or a, or a municipality, but they didn't have control over it. So if that went under and changed hands and then became, say, a subdivision, then you've completely lost your way of getting rid of water. So there's, I think that's part of what they're working through right now with developing these regs is to address some of those issues, some of those circumstances, so that when they do finally finalize them, that those those will be addressed um, in the final regs. But will the I think the intent here is to use area that we've already town already owns. It's not being used for other uses. We can fill in again if we can use some of those areas that we could not currently use in at Hill and then eventually Alexander. Then uh, we'll, it'll obviously we'll get more benefit out of that property that we aren't already getting. And it, in those areas, um, both on Hill and Alexander, the ones that are usable, they're kind of interspersed. So it's not a situation where we can easily, you know, take part of that property, sell it, kind of cut it up so that we can maybe use it for other other means. It's it's all kind of interspersed. So. Being able to use it once these regs come out, using using those not those unused areas, will uh, it'll probably be the only and most logical use of, of that property. Gotcha. Any other questions? I have two screwball ones. Sorry. I have two screwball ones, so I'll start okay. with the first one. Um, I understand that there are probably more disadvantages than advantages to this, but has anybody ever discussed with Franklin flipping the script in this day of saying, Franklin, take our stuff, maybe Franklin will take some of yours for a little while, and Franklin, you can help us build an expansion? Hmm. Uh, that that there that was brought up at one point during one of the phone calls we had uh, maybe a year ago or so there is some an area that's just kind of on the edge of town on the north side of town there between basically the north side of town berry farms that i know franklin has said that they are getting requests for uh sewer service in that area and it from a drainage standpoint it doesn't really it obviously doesn't drain that way towards their system, so it drains towards Thompson Station. And so part of the discussion was, well, maybe it would make sense for it to enter Thompson Station system and be treated that way, even though it's in Franklin. Um, now, that hasn't really gone anywhere beyond that, uh, just a few comments that we had during that one phone call, but yes, it has come up. Because I was just thinking with the concept of regionalization. I mean, you can yeah. make all the arguments about do we even want to be in this business or not, but I see an advantage of maybe it costs less 
to build on the capital side, obviously the disadvantage is what are you going to do with the, with the water and keep doing drip fields? Does Franklin have to take some of the stuff that they put in and we send it back to them for them to get rid of all those kinds of questions that don't have answers in this meeting? But that thought occurred to me. I thought I would bring it up and see if there's any value to continuing to pursue that. At I all. think definitely the Williamson County Growth Plan Group will continue to massage some of these things because um, <clears throat> we've asked that they have infrastructure experts, whether it's Middle Tennessee Electric or utilities like HBNTS, you know, folks around the table that'll have this sort of multi-dimensional discussion as to what makes more sense to serve what areas, especially when we're looking at changing growth boundaries. Now, that's not to say Franklin would give up that area, but they may. I, you know, it's um, the whole quid pro quo discussion is very new in terms of this greater uh, overarching uh, process that will really, I guess, start the clock in January. These are precursors to the timeline. So okay. I think the pace will quicken the first of the year. And then the other one had to do with reuse. Um, do we need to wait for that a little bit, or can I go ahead and ask we can that? go ahead and get into it since we sort of talked about it. Well, I, the simple question is, do they're doing a really big expansion a few miles down the road. Do they need water, and can we give it to them? You're making pretty good quality wastewater. I understand you've got Spring Hill you got to deal with. If they want to give their water over, and, and there's all kinds of questions about it. But if they're building batteries and assembling cars and they need two and a half million gallons a day of water, we're going to be giving them some pretty good water that's damn near even above drinking water quality to start with. Is there any possibility that that works out for the town? Get it that far down. There. You can pop it down there, sure. Yeah, pop it down. That, that, but I there's so many other questions. Conversa like we have, like we have to have a conversation with HB and TS. Um, we probably that would probably right. be a conversation with Spring Hill at that point. About whether there, a lot of conversations yeah. to be had. Yeah, well, I think that's a great idea. It is a good idea. Mm, yeah, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's the main. You know, getting into reuse is good. Well, you know, if that's if that's on the table in the future, is fantastic. It's yeah, I got to find an end user. So, mm -hmm. and if you have one end user to take everything, that's even better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Spring Hills, they're on the water you tell me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do we have to talk to HPTMS about that? For our stuff, for anything here, not in here, not down there. Send it directly to them. Then you're providing water in Spring Hill, so you got to talk to Spring Hill about their. Well, that's what I'm saying though. Yeah. Is if they agree to it, we have to get HPTMS. No, because it's their territory. Right. So in the end, nothing may come of it, but it seemed like a possibility that may be worth at least considering, because, like you said. One, one customer takes it all, could be kind of a neat solution. Well, uh, but I just have no idea how much water they're going to use. I mean, it's the battery is manufacturing, as I understand it. They're just mm -hmm. assembling down there, so they may not need but a few hundred thousand a day. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, but to your question or, or point, Bruce, um, I think once those regs are in place and once we've got this plan, I, everything's on the table as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I think. We, we should all brainstorm um, about how we can get rid of that because we'll have a lot of different ways that will be available to us that we don't currently have, like I just said a few minutes ago. And so I think anything off the wall like that, we should at least talk about it. I mean, it may, it may not be feasible, but um, it's... That many, we're born in a <laughs> society of all electric vehicles. The batteries run, run off water. Mm-hmm. Of water to produce for anybody else. Well, I think the, use of a resource. The, the, more, the, the, the more outlets that could become available to us that doesn't that don't require reliance on some other natural means of disposal. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff we've talked about, like you know, whether it's drip, whether it's spraying it somewhere or irrigating fields or mm -hmm. you know a pond, a toll gate, or something like that. There's there would probably likely still be restrictions on that type of reuse. Mm -hmm. But if you have a commercial reuser where they're not dependent upon the seasons and mm -hmm. what goes on, the, the impact of the weather, um, that is a, a year-round mm -hmm. way of getting rid of water. 
and that alleviates that concern altogether. That's so. kind of when I was reading the, the regs. That's kind of what popped in. I said, "Well, that should be twelve months a year, unless the union strikes. Right. What, <laughs> unions or unions, but uh, you know, just seemed like a possibility." It goes back to the conversation we've all had. The state representatives, they know you want to get out of the drip bill business, but they also know they don't want to fight a certain group. <laughs> but if you're helping the state out on a different project to get stuff through, maybe they step in and assist with that a little bit. It's just helping out one way or another. Yeah, yeah, uh, there's a lot of... Uh, Typically, uh, there's a lot of funds available for those types of projects, especially when you've got something that's going to help commercial. Um, and this would be, a, I think, a winner for everybody um, if we get to that point. And just to spin that completely out of control, if word gets around that you have this resource, maybe another industry finds that if you're willing, they may want to come in. And yeah. that may fill yeah. a gap somehow in the Part of your industrial growth plan or something like that. Yeah. If they see if you're willing to well, that comes back. That's right. Maybe not us, but maybe Spring Hill, as they look at doing that type of stuff, we can partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and do those type of yeah. things. We can attract these type of businesses. Mm -hmm. We can yeah. that. Okay. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So there's something else that. That for okay. you, I guess Good. we've got right. the, uh, the prospective additional board members. Mm -hmm. That discussion left. Let's let's put that last. I think okay. we have the uh, the, oh. the, con the commercial contract review. Oh, oh, yep, yep. Rick, would you walk us through that? <laughs> oh. The uh, the amendments, the the change to the uh, capacity commercial capacity reservation agreement is in our agenda. I didn't have that as part of my agenda. I apologize. Well, I have printed off. That's kind of why I was drawing a blank too. But yeah, I don't <laughs> have much. Okay, Maybe it got taken out. It's, it's yeah, on. It's, it's, it's on the one I have on my computer. We have already. Did we already go through that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Bom Bom has approved that. I'm pretty sure we. Yep. Came through the utility <laughs> board. Already sure. done. Two other meetings. Yeah. Passed that. And, and that, that makes it easy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Great discussion, guys. <laughs> Great discussion. Yeah. All right. Then so, I guess the, the last item we got then is the. Uh, well, just, just for clarification. I, I don't think we formally made that recommendation to item six. We talked about it. We know that we want to expand beyond one million gallons, but we didn't formally make that recommendation, have we? Yeah, and where are we going to tonight? We can discuss. Yeah. Is, that, is that something we want to we want to make a recommendation on at this time? You might want to, as you said, we have time. You might want to wait to hear more about funding. I think it's best to push it off. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's fine. We might just because there's a finance gap too, and I don't want to gum that up since we just raised the rates, and the 1.9 is still not going to get us to 2.8. And it may, it, may, it, it may help us to have a better grasp of these additional funds that yes. may become available to us. And, and also, I think it'd be important to know, too, where we're at in uh, on the impact fee side. Because, uh, you know, if we're going to expand beyond that million, that that million sh or that, that half million or whatever it is, in my opinion, should be paid fully from impact fees. Because that's new development that's contributing to that system. So that shouldn't be impacting the rate base at all so I, I think it'd be good to have a good good understanding in terms of you know what uh, what funding is or what funding levels we currently have on the uh, on the, the impact fee side uh, that are attributable to the drip fields and we were just sidebarring a little bit I guess thinking about budgetary discussions because by the time you turn around it'll It'll be when we begin in earnest the last quarter, which we're in, we start talking about things such as uh, funding gaps and wedges, whether it's for this or that 300 or 350,000 for the barge recommendation on the pipe uh, rehabilitation. So um, certainly we need to keep that on the dartboard because we're going to want to make sure we have the 
uh, budgetarily put things in place to accomplish at least that sort of near-term project as we work through some of these other larger uh, cost items that we, we may we may be fortunate enough to get these other funding items to underwrite. Uh, to your point, I guess maybe some of the additional money paid by developers, those fees we raised, maybe we'll start seeing some more of those yeah. rolling in. It may not be the profit spent in our budget cycles, but um, I, I would recommend that we definitely have their recommendation in the budget review for sure. We'll be, uh, as we get to the end of the quarter, we'll be getting with the department heads on their budgets. Of course, Kenny Schwal had his his items, but you know this this probably is an important one. And I guess I'll leave with this: when we talk about cleaning, I don't know if we're at the point having a a jet trailer or anything that large. I don't think we could justify it at this point. Renting it, things of that nature. You know, that's a, a different story, which goes to your cleaning question, Charles. But there will come a time, you know, where it'll make sense to buy that kind of equipment as opposed to rent it. But those are things we'll have to cost out and have in the budget, you know, if we're going to do some of the, a tenth every year or what have you. Yeah. Um, on the uh, prospective board members, what do you want us to do on that? Well, here's what, if I could suggest something. You've seen some emails back and forth to Randy. Um, he's not, the other candidates live in town. Randy's been in and out of Tennessee and down in Alabama helping out people with uh, plan operations. And I think you had a really good suggestion, you reached out and said, Hey, would you be interested maybe with your class four permit talking to us about how that would allow us, and Kenny knows and has talked to him, but you know, as you saw in the email, maybe getting together after Thanksgiving and see if that then would allow us to use his permit to do training and, and meet requirements that are going to be part and parcel of this new MBR facility that we have to meet. So I'd sort of recommend pulling him out of the queue Anyway, as you have two local Thompson Station candidates or interested parties, so you folks can think about that a little bit. Um, and, and there's time for you to decide if either or of those meet your, your, your druthers, and we'll put them on the next agenda. Yeah, because one of them was relatively late breaking. Well, I, I mean, I don't, one, I don't know if it's our place to make a recommendation on who our next board member may be, because yeah. the board, the BOMA may feel differently, and that could be awkward. Okay, well, and that's um, a good point, too. You know, but, it, but if, you know, if BOMA would prefer us to, to provide them with maybe some criteria that they may want to use as a guide for evaluating candidates. That's I think that's the one thing we've been missing, is right. any board we have, we need to establish some criteria for people, what we're looking for, what, what our objections are, or what our objectives are, how that person can help fill that gap. I think this is probably a very good approach for this. Now well, with the other, yeah. the LDO and all aboard, that's your chance to all, and I've talked with Mike about this to a lesser extent with Andrew, that's when you also talk about your membership and how it's comprised. Same thing with, same thing with the Parks Board too. Is that's right. What, what are we looking for? Act, active in the community, really you know, doing stuff. This one little more dialed in technical yeah. and, 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 and we we have a fairly um, technically minded makeup of people on the board I mean between these guys architect an engineer a couple lawyers I um, calls the problems. He, he sells cheese so I don't yeah know, but <laughs> and, 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 I, I sell grease well, I sell grease, grease. <laughs> yeah I, I sell all of that so I cause the problems but, but I think I you know what sell to people here at Thompson Station or is that in Springfield so I think for, for what we do though we, the, the makeup of that we had from the beginning I wouldn't say even just now but even from the beginning 
um, has been primarily of people that under, have an understanding of some facet of right. what this board looks at and, and evaluates. So I think, you know, I think that's something that would be important for Bowman to keep in mind when evaluating candidates in general. Well, that would be helpful to, to do that. I, we recently sent out, as Jess was mentioned, a list of vacancies that are here, there, throughout. So, um, but even for the utility board, even outside of right. wastewater, utility board. Yeah, so we're even if we were looking different. Well, the, and, the, and the, one, the one unique thing about our board, uh, and I don't think any other town board has this, is we're not relegated to only Thompson Station residents. We're open to outside. Oh, absolutely, you are. So, I mean, that's how, how we got Bruce. Right. Um, and, and we've had a couple others as well. So, I think that's something. Well, that's I do have a Thompson Station mailing address. <laughs> 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 so, so you're, you're, you're Thompson Station light. Yes, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thompson Station light. Mr. Well, Chair, you, you do have criteria on some of these boards statutorily. Mm -hmm. So, that you have to meet. Right. But generally, we come up with a criteria. That would so be helpful. It would be, yeah. be a good idea. And, you, you know, quite frankly, each board may want to take that on. That's what I'm saying. I mean, every board we have needs yep. to have, like, planning commission. We, we probably need to have a little bit of a criteria, a basic understanding and knowledge of land development ordinance, a little bit of what they're doing, the scope, understanding the details. I mean, we're well, particular with planning commission. And so, I mean, where is Yes, design and statutorily. Statutory. Yes. Design review, especially right now, for what the yeah. commission went to. That's a good idea. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so, but what I was going to say, and I'll look at all the board members that are here right now. If we as a board wish to help set some of the criteria, I'd be happy to take the first stab at it in sure. terms of of just getting a first draft in and then what is the process that I would have to follow to you know write three paragraphs down and submit it to who send it for to our review? Yeah, send it to Jeff. S well, you send it to me. Ben and copy uh, Kirk and, yeah. and we I mean Jeff and we had yeah. circulated. I'd yeah, okay. to, to the whole board and everybody. Yeah. yeah. Such surely make sure we hit the, hit right. the high points. Yeah. yeah. That's great, thank you. When, when you say statutorily, is there maybe a specific statute that I that well, you like might be able to send to me? Too. I'll pull so it. I'll pull it. Yeah. I'll thank you. Yeah. I'll thank pull you. it and send it to you. And also, yeah. so I think it's within uh, our bylaws. Because a lot of times people don't understand that additional training requirement, and once oh, I think they still do. Yeah. yeah. And some of us. <laughs> that have. brings me to the next topic. Uh, we need to check to make sure. That's well, we keep sending them a. Uh, a note, and I don't know how hard nosed people want to be about it. If you don't get it and you don't do it, do you want to start kicking folks off? You know, I mean, how many times do we keep reminding them? You've, yeah, you've reminded them, I've done it. In six months. Yeah. So yeah. I hear you, and I don't disagree, but. We probably need to put it on the agenda for November just as a reminder that it needs to be done. I know that. So we've Trust got, me. We've got to put that out there. We've got to, well, it's a state requirement, and it also has funding implications because they can. They can. Don't comply. And they're, because, you know, they're, they're saying it's still fairly new, and it somewhat is, but they're going to start. Actually, it's just a matter of when. Right. At some point, that's, yeah, that's true. That's going to be the first example. Can you send out <laughs> the expiration date of the people that have done it? Regina can, you can check with is Regina. keeping up with okay. that. Ms. Fowler is keeping up with yeah. that, so I think we can talk with her. We recently had uh, some continuation training of uh, something to do with go on the web. Do you might do that? And is it documented? Uh, does it fill the requirement for a whole year? Or is it only four hours of the 12? Or? You could ch check with Regina on it, and she will be able to tell you, one, if, if you've met your requirement, and then two, if if there's any follow-up that needs, because she'll check the comptroller's office and get the information from them. Because um, I, I found out I was over, so I'm, I'm good for a while. But I think every two years you have to circle back around and do something to fulfill the requirement. I think it's three. 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 I think you can sell your extra credits, too. <laughs> if, I, if I could get CLD credit for him too, I'd, I'd be well, golden. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you recall, I had conversations with the comptroller's office, and they brought up that 
certain type of training that you would file in advance. If we're having a program presented to us, they may give you an hour. Yeah. If it's a yeah. certain type of program. So we just need to know that in advance. Well, isn't that like MTAS could come in and do something, do like a little? Sure. Like, yes. What are they called? Credits. Continuation. Continuing education. CRE. Continuing education. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe this public hearing that we're going to have on the MDR, you know, that may take an hour at this point. I don't know. But something like that, maybe they'll give us some credit. So if we get, they want the materials in advance, they will look at it, and they may give you an hour. Do a work session with someone from MCAS and see if you can get 45 minutes worth of credit for that or something. Yeah. We got to do it before the meeting. If they want it, right, they want it in advance. They want to know what you're doing in advance to, to be able to do it. Um, is there anything else? Any announcements? Make a motion we adjourn. All right. Motion. Second. All in favor? Uh, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.